Hi, my name is Ted. For the next uh, semester, you will have me as your teacher, and I'm sorry, but my voice is going. Having just had a long conversation, don't know why it's going, but it'll come back. All right, I guarantee it'll be coming back by the time I'm teaching this class. All right, I need to talk real briefly about some of the, the events in my life that will influence what I'm saying in this class. And first of all, I gave my life to Christ in the U.S. Coast Guard. I joined the Coast Guard to avoid Vietnam because Vietnam was a big war during that time. Nobody wanted to join unless you really wanted a death sentence on your head. I joined the Coast Guard because it was not in uh, another country, well, in Vietnam. And so I served four years. But after about three months, I gave my life to Christ, threw away all my drugs, and I started in the Coast Guard working in finance. And I did a lot of witnessing during those four years, street witnessing, beaches, parks, hitchhiking, and prisons. Uh, there was a time, and this is actually after the four years when I was a pastor, I will tell you about that in a few seconds, but there was a time I was with my two girls, and I was walking on a pier, and I don't know why I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I was walking on a pier on Lake Michigan, and there was a girl at the end of the pier who looked really sad. She's got to be about 19 years old. And I stood about 10 feet away from her so she didn't feel threatened, and I said, listen, looks like you're struggling. I'm a pastor. Is there something you... I, I don't know what I said, but basically she opened up and said that her... Baptist deacon dad had pushed her out of the family because she got pregnant. And in the next, uh, oh, I'd say 20 minutes, I talked to her, and she gave her life to Christ. And I created a moral dilemma for her dad. I said, listen, why don't you call your dad and tell him you just gave your life to Christ. And I don't know what ever happened. And I don't know if she was received back into the family. I'm, I don't know. But these are some of the difficulties that people deal with. I, I have two masters, cross-cultural studies and a master of divinity. I was a missionary for five years in the Congo for part of that five years. I learned French in Brussels, Belgium in order to go into the Congo, which is French is kind of the elite language, but they speak Lingala. So I also learned Lingala and taught in their schools for the three years I was there in Lingala. Um, my two daughters were both born there. Jade is my younger daughter. She's into fitness, everything fitness and marketing. And she just came back from a world fitness competition in Vegas. My wife and I visited there a couple weeks ago. She's married to a pro soccer player. He used to be a pro soccer player, turned CrossFit and a tier rep and sales. My older daughter, Lene, Spanish education degree, uh, is now a Spanish social influencer and a game designer. She's dating a Spanish social influencer. I was a pastor for 10 years. Wisconsin was my first three years, four years, and I was out in the country. Church grew a lot. It was really, really awesome. My second church was in Fridley, Minnesota. We had a ministry going for the Sudanese, which was amazing. I might talk to you about that sometime. I was a teacher for 26 years after that. Well, first of all, uh, four of those, or three of those years were in Badovakecha in the Congo, in Africa, and I taught in Lingala and sometimes in French. Uh, and I have also been a teacher at Northwestern here since 1999, I think is my first class, right around there. I've taught in 17 different subjects in the Bible and Theology Department. Bethel called me one day and said they want me to come and teach in their uh, whatever department for ethics. And so I taught two years there for ethics. And all this is at nighttime because I work during the day. Uh, but during that time, I actually, for the first few years, I had a third shift job. So I was able to teach at North Central for one year during the day. And I taught just two classes, apologetics, and one called Cults and Denominations. The Cults and Denominations, I love that we actually brought in people from the cults and from the denominations, leaders from the groups. And I can tell you about that later if you have any kind of curious questions. I worked for Medtronic starting in 2000 and teaching at night, but working during the day. 
uh, as, uh, well, first of all, in security, but then that branched off into, what was I? Maintenance, okay. And then during that time, I also got a lot into YouTube. I started a channel on Josephus, who is an historian from the first century. It, it bombed. It went for about five, four or five uh, YouTube videos, and I got way over my head and said, I'm not going to do this anymore, and I quit. Uh, another one is just called Ted Olson. That's me. And that, if you just type in Ted Olson, you'll see a lot of stuff that's been going on the last 20 years in my life, including a video of me in Africa uh, back in the 80s. Um, so I have those two channels, plus other, many other failed uh, things that I tried. I have one, by the way, in Ted Olson. Ted Olson is a wide variety of things. I, I'll get into K-pop, um, you know, what it takes to be a K-pop star. I don't know if I dealt with that, but I talked about a few bands. Uh, long before K-pop was that popular in the United States. Uh, there's a story behind that. Um, but I do have my favorite video and all of that is animated videos going to a horror movie called Mashed Potatoes. That's my one. Of, that's my favorite, but not necessarily the favorite of the people who uh, are watching these videos. Uh, I had retirement plans in May of 2023, so it's just a few months ago. My plans were to continue a YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel that I have on Bible Thought. It's called Bible Thought, and all one word. And in Bible Thought, I just wanted to get it better and more twice a week rather than just once in a while and I also want to do a channel on mountain biking got everything going I even did the first film and of me falling and what to do if you fall uh, you know it's especially as an older person I'm not older yes I am well who knows anyway uh, I tried some TikTok tick tick tock channels one called Lil Ted my daughter who is a social influencer and her boyfriend, we were just talking and just having a fun time talking and they decided to create a TikTok channel and I, it immediately went off to about 600 um, followers and about 14,000 uh, views on the first thing and it just kind of goes down from there. I only did a couple of those because I lost the interest right away as they did right away. It's just more just kind of off the cuff, but that's called Lil Ted with three Ds. Uh, the second one I was gonna that I'm getting into with TikTok is AI dot Ted. I have ten followers, and not a lot. They're, right now the uh, algorithms are just giving me about ten thousand, or I'm sorry, one thousand people per view. It's jumped up a little bit recently, but I don't care because I just enjoy this part of it. This actually is something my daughter is working with me on because she knows the system. I know nothing about TikTok and how all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to learn, and so we're working on that. And speaking of AI, AI became a very big thing in my life in the last few months. Um, simply because I went to visit my brother-in-law who's into robotics. And he told me that the big thing coming up now is AI. So I looked a little bit into that, and oh my goodness, AI is huge. And so I, I was pretty much obsessed with AI uh, since May until I got these courses. And then, well, well, actually even still, I'm very obsessed about AI. So you will learn some stuff about AI and I hope you learn a lot about AI. Uh, anyway, so uh, I, I started a, uh, a .com. I started my own channel called BibleAndAI.com. And I haven't gotten that going because right as I'm getting this website up and running, I get a phone call or an email, I'm sorry, an email uh, from Northwestern saying, can you start this class and get the whole thing done in two and a half weeks? And I said, okay. Uh, there's a long story behind that. I don't care to get into it right now, but I wanted to. Um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to is because AI has consumed me so much, and I see so much how AI is going to change your future. And AI is going to become a big part of your future. And I really felt like, boy, students need this. They need to learn how to use it, and they need to know some of the background and all this stuff. And so it was a big, deep passion of mine. 
And sure enough, a week later, uh, I get this phone call or this email saying, you know, can you teach these two classes? And I said, yes, I will. Does that mean I'm going to focus on AI? Mm, it depends on which class you're taking. I will have some, and I'm wanting you to work with AI. I will give you the rules in the class. And that's it from me. You all have a good one, and we'll see you. Bye.